Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to learn about the ideal use case of each of these approaches like IAS and PaaS and SaaS and how they are each differ from one with another one. So as you remember, the host uh, is the key which we need to remember for uh, IAS and similarly for the pass as a build and consume for the SaaS and we also talked about the two of the different uh, examples for the SaaS application as the Office 365 and Salesforce in the previous lecture. Now we remember that uh, from our on-premises data center that we have to manage everything, our networking, storage and servers virtualization which is really at hardware level as well as some of the software level components like operating system, middleware, runtime components as well as the at the application level our actual applications themselves and the data that they create and save. So we have to manage every part of the stack when our data centers are on premises. Now with the infrastructure as a service what Microsoft is offering is Microsoft actually managing networking, storage, servers and virtualization components and we get to manage our OS and middleware, runtime and everything above of it. And this gives the absolute most control over how our servers are running and what we can do on them like installing an application or maybe configuration of a custom specific thing. So it's so simple way to uh, think about uh, IAS or infrastructure as a service is that there is really not to use that you couldn't do with it or nearly anything and everything uh, that's possible to configure like setting up your web server for example or maybe mail server or uh, for that matter you can do even Bitcoin mining or anything uh, you can do it almost on the uh, servers. Now when you come back to the uh, when you because you know we are able to do it all these things because we have a control on the virtual machine layer also with the within the IAS. So IAS is a kind of a most generic approach in that case it can satisfy nearly any use case it's just usually involves more work when I say more work uh, yourself uh, it's you're going to set it up these things the servers and the configuration so there would be human resources uh, will be used as well as the cost also involved you will have to actually set up your server yourself and configure it in order to get uh, your services up and running in this case and that's that may not always be a bad thing but one thing to keep in mind is with IAS the higher cost and that come to you because uh, you are doing everything on your own and you will need a people for that a uh, time to set it up all these servers and these additional resources whereas with the PaaS and SaaS you don't need to configure that kind of stuff. So really the ideal use case for IAS is when you have an application that requires other applications to be installing and running uh, require some pre-requirements uh, or software or software or specialized components that to be installed on the server and you don't uh, necessarily get the flexibility to do it uh, with the PaaS model or maybe SaaS model. So it makes uh, SaaS is the best approach uh, use cases like that and uh, you have the flexibility to install any of the software that you need and you want it to do uh, pretty easily. So in that capacity IAS or the infrastructure as a service we will remember from our keywords uh, which is a hosting uh, where we go for the planning and capacity and everything we would do it on our own. With the past, we are really building upon the platform uh, that is Microsoft giving us. Uh, for example, a SQL database, you want to use it as a service or maybe a web app as a one of the application. So you don't need to worry about the runtime or middleware or the operating systems. So the ideal case uh, for the use of this past model or a kind of in a generic boilerplate uh, applications. Web applications uh, are for one are very good candidate for pass that we can give you as example which even in fact I have shown you as a small demo in the previous uh, lecture for the pass specific but with the pass that what's being managed for us is uh, what it makes is, is a lot simpler in case uh, if a web application is really just building an application and focus on that and then deploy through pass like a uh, 
like our Azure Web App in that case. Similar case goes for SQL Database to host it up as one of the past example. So with the pass, you just get a much quicker model with uh, which to deliver your products and services instead of having to spend more time on configuring. Uh, in this case, if you see in the infrastructure as a service, you have to install. If, let's take an example as the SQL database. So here, a pass in the past, the SQL is readily available, and you simply have to use uh, the SQL service. But whereas here in the infrastructure as a service, you have to spin a VM, install, and configure, and then install the SQL server and uh, configure the database and then your application comes into the picture so you are spending a lot of resources and time so instead if you are going for the past model it much quicker model with easy to deliver your products and services instead of having to spend more and more time configuring resources so the ideal use case for the past is really twofold one of the kind of uh, boilerplate standard applications like web application or databases are also for the new applications can be come up with a past model anything that's built now as of today really should be built uh, within the cloud in mind so they call this is the native cloud approach and that's simply because as cloud grows more and more powerful and bigger and bigger it becomes more sense moving your uh, your on premises applications by considering them when you're developing uh, in the mind of uh, cloud set so you can easily migrate permanently uh, one or other day to cloud so that's the uh, in-house approach you should be looking into it if you are, are trying to develop any of the applications on your today on your on premises so with the pass we looking at uh, built upon the platform that is provided to us now sas our final model uh, manages everything for us and our example that we use with the latest uh, was office 365 which is the email services or maybe you can take it as the salesforce as one of the example so the Infrastructure as a uh, service equivalent would be setting up your own email server with within the uh, but the, within your own servers. But with the SaaS, we don't have to manage anything. We can get email just uh, just to the sign up to the new user as a new user from the portal like portal.office.com and then you sign up and you pay uh, based on your consumption model with your email services uh, or per user based or whatever the model they are offering for you and at the end you are paying for them on a subscription model so you are actually consuming that's a keyword what we used if you can remember so again, if you look at the things like email programming, uh, like Google Docs, or Office 365, even social media like uh, Facebook or Twitter, they are all considered as a software, as a service. They are the softwares that were, uh, can be consumed immediately that require no configuration or no management uh, on our end. We can simply pay as a low monthly fee for them with within the Azure, like we said in the lesson. Uh, that's not a lot of uh, pure SaaS products. But Office 365 is a kind of one of the biggest one that we can think about it and because of the things that uh, we can also remember like SAS is one of the least used model between IAS and the PaaS and the SAS is not because it's a not good uh, but it's there is just not as many offering as there are mostly within the PaaS or SAS uh, arenas within Microsoft Azure so while you may not see this lot of SaaS offering out of there, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, there's nothing good or bad thing. So it just means that each application type has its own place and the only few are uh, really suited for the SaaS based application offerings. So in case of SaaS really, the best candidate are kind of uh, again like past applications. Uh, like email office applications and the products we don't necessarily need to manage anything underlining these applications we really just wanted to consume them and that's a kind of a keyword what we wanted to use so as, as i said you know the, i have given the keywords for every model like uh, i is i gave as a host as a keyword and the pass i gave as built and for the consume is uh, the keyword for sas 
So any application or services we don't really care about building ourselves or managing ourselves, we just want to consume. That's a service really good a candidate for looking at the SaaS service. And so we can see this image, uh, this entire image, and we can imagine that that's really come down how much control you have uh, with the within these each and every model and based on that you can you know consume you can use you can build and you can host if you need as much as uh, control as possible we can start with on premises and then if you can give some of the hardware level control we can move to uh, infrastructure as a service model if you can give up of the middleware and runtime control then we can move to path and finally, if you can give up all control over how the software is written and hosted, we can move into SaaS offerings. And as we move across, we also saving more and more money along the way. So I hope these series of lessons are help you to understand about IAS and PaaS and SaaS.